Hello, Taliota champs, and welcome to the show. Now I have the Dell XPS 15 9570 on the right, i9, 32 gigs RAM, GTX 10. 50Ti Max-Q 4GB. On the left here we have the XPS 15, 95, 75, 16 gigs RAM. I think it has a terabyte SSD and it has Kaby Lake G, which is the Vega Intel combination CPU, GPU there. So this is quad core, hex core, six cores, both eight generation as well. Now, if you are interested in these laptops, and I will be mainly focusing on this one, the XPS 15 9570, make sure you like and subscribe because I will have a lot of videos on this. No one will cover it in more depth than me, and that goes for pretty much any laptop. I do comprehensive reviews, video editing reviews, I do gaming reviews, I do all type of reviews, thermal reviews, everything. So make sure you subscribe to see future laptop videos. So having a look, at these two laptops you can see that this is indeed a two-in-one you can tell by the hinge there it sits a little bit lower but other than that they look pretty much the same this does have two infrared camera there and i think a normal camera and this one only has one but they're in the middle both of them the new dell logo so that's the thinner font there I think they both have the same display. I will cover that in the reviews. I think they are the same display. This one has some sort of different layer on it, I think, so that the pen works better. And here is the pen. And as you'll see, it's magnetic. It will stick to this. Obviously, it won't stick to this. Um, I will actually talk about some benchmarks I've done with this one and this cleaned house, okay? This is the fastest rendering laptop for the sample project in Premiere Pro. Um, very impressive I'll get to that later I'll talk about the thermals too but this isn't my full review but if we just have a look here at this so let's... the pen will indeed work on both and it actually works quite well on this XPS 15 here the 9570 but it is smoother on this one it is smoother noticeably smoother obviously it's made for this pen is made for this whereas this it works fine even the pressure sensitivity works so interesting you could probably get away with one of these pens and use it with this also might notice power this one has a power barrel the normal barrel charger this one here has usb-c because this is thinner and lighter i'll show you the thickness difference later but if i plug this in here it will indeed power it now i don't think it will give it the full 130 watts okay through that thunderbolt 3 which is four times now it used to be two times on the old model now it's four times it won't give it the full power and it won't charge as fast as well but it does indeed work so any USB-C you could probably plug in there and it will work. So we don't need that anymore. If we look at the read and write speeds of the SSD, we have super fast reads on the XPS 15 9570. I'll just say this one, that one, I think you know which one's which. Super fast read speeds, write speeds are close to a thousand megabytes per second. So no complaints there. Toshiba drive in this, this has one terabyte. The most important thing is the read speeds, and the read speeds are fast, so that's good. The write speeds could be faster, but it's pretty good. I, I wouldn't have any complaints. I doubt you'd notice any difference. Also, this one here, I'm not sure what SSD this one has. It's not quite as fast read speeds as this one, but the write speeds are faster. So both of them have nice, fast SSDs. Okay, if we look at both displays, I do believe they both have the same displays as I said before, except this has a different layer. They are very bright. What I noticed about this new XPS 15, straight away I noticed the brightness. It does have a better display than the last XPS 15. It is certainly brighter, but the last XPS 15 has a great display too. So, you know, be happy with that. You got one of the best displays if you have a 9560 or even a 9550, but this one is brighter and it does look very nice i'll get more into that in later reviews fingerprint sensor is now here instead of here i actually prefer it here because your hands are sort of here anyway i don't know whatever but they both have the fingerprint sensor here i believe now i was talking about the render speeds and i actually have a picture here now this is with um hardware acceleration enabled because adobe have an update and this one here done it in half the time of what every other laptop done 
with the hardware acceleration. Now, without it, it's still done it in nine minutes and nine seconds, I believe it was. Let me just check. Yes, it done it in nine minutes and nine seconds. And for reference, the last XPS 15 done it in 13 minutes and 45 seconds. And the Aero 15X, the latest one I've just reviewed with the GTX 1070 Max-Q, done it in 10 minutes and 45 seconds. So this is like over a minute faster than the Aero, the Gigabyte Aero. Now this has an i9, the Gigabyte Aero has an i7. Also, the Gigabyte Aero did have only 16 gigs RAM running that single channel. So they may get a bit closer if I added another 16 gigs to the Gigabyte Aero. But it just proves to you that even though this has a GTX 1050 Ti and the Gigabyte Aero has a GTX 1070, this is faster rendering. Probably because of that i9 and maybe a bit because of the RAM as well, but it is faster rendering. So in terms of video editing, I don't think you're going to be hindered at all by a 1050 Ti. I think it's more than powerful enough. And even for gaming, considering this has a 60 hertz display, it's going to power 60 hertz medium settings. Pretty much every game, 60 frames per second, may even get high settings on some games. We'll test that later. We'll soon find out. But I know a lot of people were complaining that didn't have a 1060 in this and that. But for video editing, I don't think it's going to make much difference. It's faster than the Gigabyte Aero with a GTX 1070. That is what it is. I will have a video editing review coming out as well as gaming review. Okay, now let's have a look at the thermals. Now, the benchmark has been running for long enough that, um, how long has it been running? Six minutes, okay. Long enough to just tell me that these temperatures will be stable. I'm going to leave it on for longer and I will tell you if anything changes, but generally it's going to stick here and it's going to be stable. Now, don't be fooled. That says it throttled, okay. If you have a look here, see that massive spike at the start? That's when I turn the benchmark on. And as soon as the fans kicked in, those temperatures went right down. So that ignore that throttling. That's just, see there, the spike. It's the same spike right there before the fans kicked in. Once the fans kicked in, it has not throttled at all. We're talking 3 gigahertz, all-core boost. So that's fantastic. So it's over the 2.9, which is its base speed. So if it's over 2.9, it is not throttling. And this is not throttling at all. And what I noticed is it's not that loud. I think the fans can go on higher, like faster. So I think they're being conservative. If we look at the temperatures, you'll see it had that spike at the start. So it did reach 100 degrees before the fans kicked in. We're looking at around 80 degrees. So it's very conservative. The fans aren't going that fast. So I believe this is very conservative. I think they can raise that clock speed and get up into the 90s. Um, they've decided that's how they've tuned it at the moment to sit in the 80s and be at 3 gigahertz i think they can go to 3.1 3.2 something like that and this is six cores all six cores bursting and maybe put those temperatures into the 90s so i think more performance can be gained with a firmware upgrade of etc now i'm not scared of temperatures in the 90s anymore since the mac used to always get into the 90s used to get to the 100 all the time and if we have a look at this 9575 which is the two in one and we can see here the temperatures uh, just touching into the 80s sometimes touching into the 90s and indeed this doesn't throttle either even though it does say one percent just ignore that trust me it has been super stable at these clock speeds which is a higher clock speed because this is a quad core of course and we're getting oh, 3 gigahertz, 2.9, actually 3.4 there. There you go. Just fluctuates up and down a little bit. But it does burst at a higher clock speed than this. But this is 6 cores on the 9570 versus 4 cores on the 2-in-1 there. So the thermals, CPU only, very well controlled. We'll have to see how they go when we gain. See if there's any throttling once you introduce the heat of the GPU as well and we'll soon see so if we have a look at here the differences in thickness there's not a great deal of difference but definitely the two in one is thinner you do not get all the ports with the two in one i will do a proper comparison video between the two you get all the ports on the xps 15 95 70 you get the usb type a you get the sd card full-size SD card slot, and also you get Thunderbolt as well. 
and HDMI, whereas this one here, you only get USB-C and Thunderbolt and mini SD card compared to here on this left side. This is nice and thin, isn't it? Yeah, there is a mill there, here, there. But of course, this one is a two-in-one. So, so there you go. That is a two-in-one. This one obviously isn't. As you can see there on the logo, you have the new Dell logo, which is a thinner font. You may not have picked that up, but I picked it up straight away. Thinner font, different logo, and a different finish. And I do like this finish. I really do. It looks beautiful. Uh, it does look better than the old finish. It looks more, looks more like a matte finish there. So really does look good. It looks nice. Uh, stay tuned for more XPS 15 content. This is your chance to write down there in the comments what you would like tested on this. Let me know down there in the comments. I will catch you in another video. Until next time, guys. Tally ho.